的工作坊对我来说，收获最大是呃，透过我们老师的一个带领，从理论的讲解到一个呃实力的一个呃说明。然后再进入这个所谓的一个实力的实作跟分享，以及最后老师有做整个呃呃后设，让我们很清楚说，哎，今天我们学了很多，不管从投入到聚焦，或是调查组织、建立通则，到最后的一个迁移的这些学习策略，它不但是哦、呃，我们老师在做一个课程架构的一个思维，更是我们可以应用到学生的学习上面。所以我觉得这是非常实用的一个工作。这是我有史以来参加过最烧脑的、最累人的那个呃工作坊，但是我觉得收获很多。就是嗯，我觉得趁这个机会，把曾经看过的东西，透过老师的示范，还有自己的体验，然后再加上老师后生的说明，对一些技巧其实有更清楚的理解，然后也发现了有自己还有很多的问题。对，谢谢。呃、首先先感谢艾斯克的举办了这三天的演习，然后以概念为本的课程。与教学，呃，那我自己感受到整个课程的威力，就是老师非常善于使用很多的素材，让我们去练习概念为本的策略怎么去执行。所以老师不断的在进行，就是就是观察，然后体会那个策略，然后再告诉我们怎么去运用。那这在我们在教学现场以及实际在。操作的时候提供非常大的力量，让我们知道原来概念为本的课程是具有这样的魔力，不管是对老师、学生，还有甚至是整个学校文化，是一个非常大的呃帮助。未来师生可以去面对未来的问题跟解决事情的能力，所以我觉得这三天个人的心得是非常的收获很大。谢谢。我觉得这一次，呃 ，Rachel French 他来的当中，他把概念怎么样去形成，甚至怎么样进入到通则，他做了一个非常清楚的解释，甚至还教了很多的策略。这个策略是非常能够及时在我的课堂上能够怎么样使用。那接下来我非常期待，我怎么样在课堂上让孩子们使用这些策略，并且带孩子去形成概念，最后形成通则。我相信对孩子一定非常收获，甚至对我也非常有收获。谢谢你们。今天早上的课程一直到下午，觉得最大的收获是，其实作为一个大学的老师，我们目前正在发展跨领域的课程，同时希望学生能够养成所谓的解决问题的能力。那今天整个工作方的历程，其实非常清晰的帮我们架构了一个可以走的路径，我觉得是非常棒的事情，这、就是很大的收获。然后乃至于其实在教学现场应该如何操作。整个课程应该在结构上应该如何去安顿，来自于提问的策略，其实都是很大的收获。那感受就是真的很烧脑，但是这个烧脑是觉得是一种很幸福的，因为在大学现场或者高中端，今天有这么多高中的老师一起创课、一起学习，我觉得其实是很重要。同时啊、呃，也觉得台湾的教育看到这样的伙伴，觉得还是有希望。Having just finished a workshop with a group of fifty very passionate educators, I've been impressed and leave feeling very hopeful for the future of education here. I sense that some of the teaching strategies in the past have been very traditional, and I get the impression that teachers are very open to trying new ideas. To exploring concept-based inquiry and what that will mean in their classroom, I can tell that before I arrived, there was already a lot of work, and that here in Taipei and and broader and more broadly in Taiwan, you have a really strong team of passionate educators who are committed to professional learning, and I work with schools and teachers and professional learning communities all over the world. And I think it would be fair to say that I've never seen a group as passionate and as committed as all of you are about learning and about the possibilities for education in the future. So I feel so optimistic and so excited about what you can all achieve together, about the way that you will take this work that was developed by Dr. Lynn Erickson and Dr. Lars Lenning. 
and the work that Carla and I have done on implementing concept-based inquiry and the work that Tiffany Brown is now doing around English language arts. And I can see that you're going to take this and really run with it and create a model that's going to be successful here, but not just successful here, but that a model for other countries who are looking to implement concept-based strategies. I really see that Taiwan has the potential to really lead the way in this field because you've got so much momentum going already. Absolutely, I certainly do. I've already uh, laid out a challenge to the teachers who've been here at this workshop to say within the next two weeks, yes. I want to see them sharing what they've already tried in their classroom, even if it's just one strategy. Okay, I don't expect them to be planning full concept-based mm -hmm. units overnight, but I want them to start exploring the potential that this has in mm -hmm. the classroom. And I know that every teacher can do that, that they can just try one strategy, mm -hmm. because that's how it starts. It starts with just beginning to try these ideas in the classroom and seeing how students respond. Mm -hmm. And not every strategy will be successful every time, but going back and reflecting and thinking, Okay, how do I need to change that? Or what extra scaffolding do my students need to be successful? And the power that you've got here as a group, learning together, is really going to strengthen that. Because if one, just one person shares in the Facebook group that you've created, this is what I tried, then someone else is going to be inspired. And so by sharing that in the group that you've created, they're going to inspire each other and keep that momentum going. So I'm really excited to see what comes in the next weeks and months. Mm -hmm. And your challenge for teachers to create a video of yes. their classroom practice. It doesn't have to be high quality editing. It's just about producing evidence of I'm trying. I'm giving this a go and I want to see its potential. And this is what I... This is what my students have been capable of. And hopefully those videos include a little reflection at the end where they can talk about, this is what I've noticed, this is what I'm still wondering, this is what I want to learn next. Yes. Because the way that we can all help these teachers progress is if they start to go, okay, I've tried this, but I have these questions. Mm -hmm. What do I do here? And to develop that professional learning community mm -hmm. as one that will continue to ask questions and share ideas. <laughs> I was so fortunate to attend the Concept Based Curriculum Instruction Training Institute eight years ago now. You just attended it last year. And I think the secret is practice and to keep trying it. The first time that you write a unit, your generalizations might feel awkward or not well crafted, but that's where we need to share those ideas and get feedback from others and say, you know, what do you think of this generalization? And in doing that, we'll be able to help each other to craft stronger generalizations. Those generalizations get easier to write with practice. Absolutely. And the reason that Carla and I developed the second book, Concept Based Inquiry in Action, was because we recognized that teachers were very passionate about concept based and the clarity that the written curriculum brought when we can clearly articulate, this is what we want our students to know, understand and be able to do. But the challenge that we were seeing was they weren't quite sure how to implement that in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So we've developed this resource, but it's a resource that we don't want teachers to see as the only way or the only strategies. We want them to be modifying the strategies, which I was excited to see happening in the workshop today. Teachers were already saying, I'm going to use this, but I'm actually going to change it in this way for this unit. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to see, teachers making sense of how will this work for my students and thinking about those phases of concept formation and then generalisation and then transfer and how we're scaffolding. Mm -hmm. students. Oh, that's a great question. I think just telling people, yes, that's great, isn't always helpful. To be able to say, hey, maybe you could try this. Um, it's not necessarily being critical, it's about sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. So when somebody suggests, ah, this is my generalization, and you feel that you can help strengthen that, mm -hmm. say, oh, uh, you could try this, or maybe you could word it this way, or 
this is like another generalization that I've used because you'll find that there are common themes. So it doesn't have to be critical yes. to be helpful. It can be just a, a, an idea of sharing. Yes. So it doesn't have to be that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It can be, oh, did you notice there's still a level one verb there? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could try this. Mm -hmm. And just giving people feedback. And that, create, that takes creating a community that are open-minded and seeking feedback mm -hmm. so it's also not just about the feedback that you give but the way that you post mm -hmm. and to say i tried this but it didn't work mm -hmm. can anyone give me ideas or i've got this generalization but i'm not sure how i can engage my students so yes. you don't have to feel like you have all the answers mm -hmm. put it out there and say does anyone have ideas mm -hmm. well that's going to welcome so many ideas yeah, so dare to ask for for help Right, so it's there to share success, it's there to share, share challenges, and it's there to ask for ideas, ask for feedback. Yes. Because if you ask for feedback, then you're going to get feedback that doesn't seem critical because you are asking for that, you yes. are seeking that feedback. Yes. Well, I'm hoping to do two things. Yes. One is to help to deepen the understanding of those who are really committed. Yes, yes. So you've talked about saying, you know, we want to see videos, we want to see your commitment to this before you do further training. Yes. So I'm hoping that when I can come back, I can create a workshop that is on two levels. One is more advanced training, mm -hmm. but one is also an opportunity to invite that sharing back. Yes. I want to see at the next workshop what people have come up with already. And I want to support teachers really in strengthening their ability to articulate those generalizations clearly. I continue to work with teachers around the world, yes. so continue to bring new ideas and also, I'm hoping that you're going to give me your ideas to share with teachers in other countries. That, mm. that as I said earlier, that you're going to become a model for other countries and that yes. we can start to share mm. videos of your classroom practice. Because I think it's important to have examples from many cultures, not just examples from English-speaking classrooms. Because we can provide subtitles on our English videos, but we can also provide subtitles so that people all over the world can be watching Classroom practice here, absolutely. I think that's incredibly powerful to show that this is something that can be used in any country, anywhere. This is what makes yeah. successful education. It's transferable. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so before you come back next time, uh, let us to um, uh, thank you again and I wish you a safe and uh, uh, nice trip back to New Zealand. Thank you, and thank you for your wonderful hospitality. It is such a wonderful country with such warm people, so I'll be excited to come back again and to see your progress. Yes, next time. and come back to teach. Absolutely, maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay.